Our next speaker is Mr. Jerry Rubensky. He's our lead, technology, lead technologist for our air vehicle engineering. So, Jerry Rubensky. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to do first off is just to give a, an overview of the department before I get into the topic descriptions. So as, as Donna indicated, um, I'm, I'm with the Air Vehicle Engineering Department. The department is comprised of five divisions. We have the Structures Division, Materials Engineering, Subsystems, Aeromechanics, and a Systems Engineering Division. Each of those divisions are broken down into a group of, of branches. And um, you know, these divisions, these branches, the, the scientists and engineers within the department are the subject matter experts on the various technologies. So within the structures division, uh, we have the strength branches for both tactical aircraft and patrol and rotary. So they're the gatekeepers for uh, structural certification. Uh, within the Structures Division, there's a uh, Loads and Dynamics branch, there's a, a Life Tracking branch, and of course the Life Tracking manages aircraft uh, expended life, okay? There's also an Airframe Technology branch that uh, oversees research in analysis tools, structural analysis tools, especially for uh, uh, doing, uh, as our aircraft are now becoming more and more dependent on composite materials, uh, understanding structural durability of composites and, and lifing of composites. Uh, within the materials engineering uh, division, uh, we have a, a metals and, and ceramics branch, uh, again, responsible for uh, fatigue life of, of metals, uh, responsible for high temperature uh, ceramic materials and high temperature metals for propulsion environments. Um, we're doing research in terms of uh, understanding impact events on, on those ceramics in, a, uh, in an engine environment. We have a non-destructive inspection branch which is uh, geared towards uh, basically understanding, uh, looking for damage within the aircraft um, that's necessarily not visible. Um, there's a, uh, a, 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 um, uh, a chemistry branch, there's a corrosion and control branch. Uh, these guys are responsible for developing and overseeing uh, cleaners and uh, corrosion preventive compounds and, uh, and top coats. There's a, uh, a, the aeromechanics division, of course, oversees uh, performance and uh, flight dynamics, uh, handling qualities, uh, advanced analysis tools for uh, computational fluid dynamics. This, uh, the subsystems division is associated with all the various pieces and parts like fasteners and landing gear, hydraulics, uh, transparencies, uh, pneumatics, uh, braking systems, tires that are also on the aircraft. So for the most part, the department uh, is, is basically responsible for the airframe. We do not do propulsion. We do not do avionics. Um, and uh, we're pretty much the gatekeepers for the certification of all these technologies. So I, so I say that, and, and I'm, I'm going to look back to you, and we are receptive to novel ideas, okay, that you may have developed, I, I, I like to say, in your kitchen or in your basement, because a lot of you guys may not actually be business owners yet. Maybe you just came here because you have an idea. We're receptive to that, and and you know I'll throw my name out there if it's within the structures area or the materials or aeromechanics or subsystems arena. Feel free to, to reach out and give me a call and talk to me, okay? And if there's something that is truly innovative that can that can help us with our needs, we can chat with the potential of developing a topic. Now the problems associated with that is then that topic gets out there it does not guarantee you an award. In fact, it stimulates your competitors from developing solutions. So it's all about not just the topic, but it's about a good proposal, okay? So what I'd like to do now is just go through the topics, okay? So, um, so the first topic is actually uh, an avionics topic. It's uh, additive manufacturing technology for sonobuoy buoy applications, 
So even though it's a four or five topic, I, I can talk to it a little bit. Um, so, so typically, additive manufacturing has, be, has been used for, for prototyping and um, low volume type production, okay? Um, one of the things that they're looking to do here is use additive manufacturing to actually produce um, large quantities uh, of uh, sauna buoy components, okay? And so there's a challenge here, and they're looking for basically novel uh, production methods, okay? Or, or possibly leveraging unique materials here. And, and the key is to reduce costs for large production uh, type of, um, of uh, producing large, large quantities of sauna buoy type components. And, and one of the, th the things you gotta be aware of is, this is not just an SBIR topic to go out and produce a sauna buoy using additive manufacturing, okay? That's, that's not gonna fly, right? You've gotta, you, if you wanna propose to something like this, you gotta propose about leveraging some type of novel method to, to, to reduce costs in large quantity productions. The, uh, the next topic is a uh, modular multi-platform rotor hub fatigue um, uh, test, test rig, test fixture, okay. So, so currently um, when we do uh, testing for uh, the main rotor hub and for the shaft assemblies, these are done separately, okay. They're not done together. And, um, and we, we want to be able to have a, uh, a test system that enables us to test these as a unit, and also such that it's reconfigurable because these are on multiple platforms, multiple um, helicopter platforms, and we'd like to be able to reconfigure this test rig simply so that we don't have to come back and retool for fixturing, specialized fixturing for each specific uh, platform that has to undergo uh, this testing. Um, the, the test rig has to be able to handle a wide, diverse uh, range of, of uh, loading as well. The next topic is the um, innovative approach to full-scale fatigue testing using uh, hybrid methodologies. So our, our, hel our helicopters are um, exposed to both low-frequency, high-stress type loading conditions combined with high frequency, low stress loading conditions, okay? The, the low cycle, high loads, it basically uh, initiate microcracks within the components, and when they're subjected to these high cycle, uh, low load type vibration environments, those fatigue, those microcracks tend to grow. And what we've observed is basically in service is that over time, we're starting to limit ourselves to our fatigue life because these microcracks are growing to a certain level that we have to pull them out of service, okay? So, so typically, we don't test these simultaneously because, the, the, it, number one, it's very difficult to do high cycle fatigue testing, okay? Um, just because of the, uh, the, the time it takes to do the testing, and the equipment necessary to try to speed it up, okay? And we want to be able to combine them together. And we're looking at doing this, uh, of course, for uh, full uh, airframes. So, so the next topic is out of the air mechanics division. And basically, the air mechanics uh, uh, division, specifically the analysis group there, is very concerned about the airship uh, dynamic interface. So as we're launching or recovering uh, aircraft, we're worried about the, uh, the air wakes that, that's coming off the ship as we're trying to, to recover and the influence that has on, on the platform. Um, we're worried about when we, when we land uh, a helicopter and have all these rotor flows coming down and they start bouncing off of, of ship structure and coming back to the helicopter, that effect. So the way we study those phenomena is we use computational fluid dynamics. 
And those analyses require a lot of data storage, okay? Um, we're looking at doing this analysis as a function of time, so we're doing multiple time steps. And we're using up tons and tons of data storage, and that's really costing us both in terms of, of dollars as well as computational time and wall clock time. And so we're looking at methods to do what we call reduced order modeling, okay? The, um, the next topic is uh, prediction of rotor loads uh, from fusil fuselage sensors for improved structural modeling, modeling and fatigue life calculation. Um, currently, the way they obtain um, rotor loads is through flight testing. And we're only, we only perform limited flight testing based on, on resources. And yet there's an infinite number of, um, of you know, flight regimes that you can impart or an array of different loads on, on the rotor hub. Um, and so what, what we're looking, um, what we're looking at to, to do is to use sensors within the airframe, okay, um, to uh, basically, um, and, and that, that rotor imparts a lot of vibrations on, on the airframe structure. So what we're looking to do is to use sensors in the airframe um, to basically uh, predict um, uh, fatigue analysis based on the measured loads that it, that it gets there, okay? And, and that way we can, if we, have a, if we have an engineering analysis that we're comfortable with, we can fill in the blanks for what we don't know from flight testing. And I think that's that. Thank you.